Developing tonight, prosecutors believe the woman accused of killing a CPD officer was impaired at the time of the crash. I'm Josh Rowe. And I'm Kim Chapman. This is video right here of Janet Hines from her court appearance today where her case was bound over to a grand jury. Hamilton County's DA says that Hines had the equivalent of six beers and one shot hours before Nicholas Gallinger was hit and killed in Hickson. And Kylie Thomas was in court all day and shows us what else was revealed today in court. Kylie. Well, Josh and Kim, the judge uh, decided to keep all nine charges against Janet Hines today. She's accused of killing officer Nicholas Gallinger in a hit and run. Now, today, the DA's office actually asked to upgrade some of those charges to include impairment and a DUI, but the judge says he wants to see more evidence first. Janet Hines clinches a Kleenex as she's faced with the possibility of a new reality. I yelled at him multiple times. Um, Officer Jared Justice recounted the minutes leading up to Officer Gallinger's death. He had been training Officer Gallinger for several weeks. I got on the radio and called break. Um, for us, that is our language of saying I, I have an emergency. The state played never before seen body camera footage. The judge asked all media to turn off the cameras during this time because it was so graphic. We heard the impact and saw the officer run to Gallinger asking if he could hear him. Justice says that he couldn't feel his pulse. It came up with a speed between 47 and 52 miles per hour in a 35 zone. Officer Joe Warren is leading this investigation. He says Officer Gallinger was thrown 160 feet. He believes that Hines may have been driving under the influence. That's based on her leaving the scene, surveillance footage from the road, and footage from the restaurant that Hines was at prior to the crash. Just casual drinking, no chugging, you know, just sipping. Jessica Powell weighed in on Hines at Farm to Fork the night of the crime. According to this tab and credit card receipt, she bought three beers and one shot. Police say she drank 72 ounces of beer and one shot in all. That's according to surveillance footage inside the restaurant. What we have here is a freak and tragic accident. Hines' attorney argues that the state has no evidence on how her drinking over three and a half hours would impact her driving. Ben McGowan says Hines only realized that she hit the barricade in the road, not Officer Gallinger, during that rainy night. He says the two happened simultaneously. Now, also inside the courtroom today, the two sides went back and forth about that day and a half following the crash. Police say that they looked for Hines everywhere. They even say that they interviewed several of her family members, but her attorney explained today that she couldn't turn herself in until a warrant was issued. She turned herself in to police last Monday morning. Live outside of the Hamilton County Courthouse, I'm Kylie Thomas, News Channel 9. Kylie, thank you. The court also got a look at photos of Heinz's SUV. CPD officer and traffic investigator Joe Warren said the damage encompasses the entire windshield and goes inward. Officer Warren said it is not normal for people to continue driving with this type of damage. If it obstructs a windshield like it did in this case, I would think that would be very dangerous to try and drive off from that, with that windshield. So I would think it would be safer for her to, to make a phone call. Hines' attorney says she thought she hit a barricade in the road, but did not believe she hit another person. The judge cut Janet Hines' $300,000 bond in half. The defense called her sister to testify about her concerns about staying in custody. Hines appeared to be emotional as her sister, Cindy Mossgrove, addressed the court. She says Janet cares for her elderly parents and also has some health issues that can't be cared for at the jail. She also fears that her sister could lose her job as the postmaster in Saudi Daisy if she can't make bond. I feel if she does, if she's not able to return to work in some capacity, she will lose all of her retirement that she's worked for 33 years to obtain. If Hines makes the new bond, she will be put on house arrest except to leave for work. She will also be subject to alcohol monitoring and will have to surrender her license and passport.